Hi, welcome to Chaos to Clarity. Meteorologist Bernie Reno, very difficult forecast along the southeast coast of the United States. It is very likely we're going to have a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, this weekend off the east coast of Florida. By the way, this was the wave that we talked about last week, if you're watching me on the forecast feed, that this was the wave that everybody would forget about. It got dropped, and I said, listen, if this holds its moisture and its organization, it'll be getting into the Northwest Caribbean on Tuesday, and then it would develop. Now, I thought it would be in this area. Let me let me show you where I thought it was going to be late in the week. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it may be somewhere in here as we got into the latter half of this week. It's not going to be here. It's going to be here. Now, that was 10 days ago, but nonetheless, the idea was is that if this wave could survive, you can see that there was less wind shear in the Northwest Caribbean, in this case, the Southwest Atlantic, and this would develop. And this is going to develop, I, I th feel very strongly, into a tropical storm or a hurricane as it goes northward. And I'll show you that. Um, I'll show you that coming up. Now, what I always like to do, and, and those that follow me on, uh, on X know I do this a lot. What I do is I take where the system is located and I look at historical tracks. Now, I must tell you, remember, we do not have a storm here. There is no tropical storm or hurricane right now in this area. But nonetheless, I decided, all right, given where it is now, all right, and given other storms that go in this area, what does history say? It is interesting that history says there are two main paths, out to sea, number one, and in toward the Gulf, number two, and toward Florida. Those are the two main paths, history says. Now, the pattern rejects this one. That is, that it goes toward the east coast of Florida into the Gulf. The, the pattern doesn't suggest that, but I do think it is interesting that history says this far south, they usually go here or they go here, they don't go where we think this could go into the Carolinas. And also, the the, the other part of this that's going to complicate this is that you're going to have Umberto off to the east. What impact will that have? So it gets a little murky, especially as we get into early next week. I don't think there's much, um, many forecast problems from now into the weekend because I do think that this is going to develop. And I'll show you why. What I want to do is I'm going to show you the European model, all right, where it tracks it, and then we're going to look at the wind shear. We're going to look at 200 middle bar, 40,000 feet into the atmosphere, and show you why I think this will go into a uh, into a uh, a tropical storm, certainly a tropical storm. So let me show you where it is now. Now you're looking at energy, right? This is Umberto. You can see the white and the red. That's showing you a lot of energy. This is where it is this evening, and you'll notice not much to it. All right, let's add, but now here's the reason for that. Here's where it is. What does the wind shear look like right now? Here's the wind shear right here. There is some westerly wind shear, so it's located here, and you can see there's west wind shear. But look up here. Look up here. You see this light area of winds in here. That's where this is going, and there's sufficient moisture and water temperatures are like 84, 85 degrees. All right, let me go ahead, because we have limited time. This is tomorrow evening. Now, you notice, not much on a European tomorrow evening. There it is. Little yellow here. It's uh, south of the Turks and Caicos right here. There it is. What does the wind shear look like? Uh, wind shear in that area right in here. All right, you're starting to get in light wind shear. And you can see this little pocket of light wind shear in here. So expect for this to start getting organized tomorrow evening. Now, you're going to notice the difference in this moving forward. Let's go back. This is it. Friday evening, you see where it is. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, now Saturday evening, just north of the Turks and Caicos. Look at all the red showing up here. By the way, this is Umberto, which should be a hurricane by then. Look at the 200, 200 millibar, winds at 40,000 feet, very light wind shear. You see where it is? It's right here in this pocket of low wind shear. Not only that, you can see an outline of high pressure aloft. All right, so right in here, you see that little area? So it's a high pressure system aloft. It's right underneath it, which means low wind shear, sufficient moisture, water temperatures in the middle 80s. 
Watch what happens going forward here. Let's move forward. There it is. Let's go to Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Then all of a sudden you see more red. There it is. Northern Bahamas. And where is it? Tucked in here. Lower wind shear. Now, after this, you start getting wind shear coming in out of the south, but it's going with the storm. That could be always tricky because the winds are increasing, but it's at the back of the storm. It's different. Now, think about it this way. If you're taking a walk uh, in the afternoon and you have wind, what's easier? When it's at your back or at your in your face? When it's in your face, you have some problems. That's what's going on now with this system. It has wind shear coming in the opposite direction that it's going, right? So it's trying to move to the northwest and the wind shear is coming in from the west. That's why it's getting sheared. But what's going to happen is low wind shear. And then by the time we get into Sunday, well, it's trying to move north, but the wind shear is coming at its back, right? And oftentimes, even with, southern, even with the wind shear at its back, you can intensify the storm. So that's why I think this is going to hold as a tropical storm, even hurricane, as it moves forward. All right. So I feel pretty comfortable that this is what's going to happen here. I want to show you this. This is kind of an idea of what's going to happen. Let me, uh, let me put this on play. So this is a little track that we have here. So let me put my camera on full. So I feel pretty comfortable that it's going to take this move, and then by Sunday, it's right in here. Sunday afternoon, it's off the Florida coast. Probably a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane. The question then becomes, where it gets murky is what happens here next week. Is it here or is it out? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? What I want to do is I want to show you some modeling on this. And I'm going to show you... I'm not a big believer of the hurricane models. I, I'm just not. I know a lot of meteorologists, especially on TV, that's all they'll show you. I like, you know what I like? I like the global models because I just think they have a better idea of the overall steering flow. I'm going to show you four. And you can take a look at them and then we'll talk about what I think is going to happen. So here we are. I'm going to take this. This is the American model Sunday evening. All right, let me put this full for you. So this is the American model Sunday evening. Where I want you to zone in as I show you on these models, these mo this box, all right? This is the American model. And what's going on? I'll, I'll break it down a little more for you, but there's the American model. Watch where it takes it. Sunday evening, Monday morning, Monday evening, into the South Carolina coast, just between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. All right, that's the American model. Let's go to the European model. Sunday evening, where does it take it? Now, it's a little slower, but it takes it where? Where does it take it? This is the European. It takes it right toward Charleston. That'll be Monday night. That's the American, that's the European model, right? This is the Canadian model. Sunday evening, where does it take it? Right near Myrtle Beach. This is the interesting one. This is the UK Met. This is the British model. Watch what it does. It doesn't do anything with it. You notice that? It doesn't have anything. It's trying to, but it weakens it. I think it sees Umberto here, and I think it believes Umberto is going to put some wind shear on it and weaken it. That's possible. You can't rule that possibility out. That's what makes me nervous about this situation. If we didn't have Umberto here, I would feel very comfortable taking this into the Carolinas because you can see why. You've got an upper low here. You've got high pressure over here, right? Let's You've got a steering flow taking this northward into the Carolinas. I thought I, if it wasn't for Alberto, I'd tell you that's pretty much game, set, match. That we would have a hurricane, certainly a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, coming ashore anywhere between uh, Charleston and uh, Cape Lookout, North Carolina. Because historically, when you're talking about storms coming toward the Carolinas, that's where they go. They typically don't make landfall south of Charleston. But you do have Alberto there. And that's what makes things tricky. So I want to show this to you, and I'll be using the GFS on this. 
Um, so let me let me show you what we're going to be looking at here. So let me show you this. This is a simplified version of what I just showed you. I'm going to go full on this. So this is this. Let me, it's right here. Sorry. Okay. So this is Sunday at noon. Here's the what's going on. So Sunday at noon, you've got an upper low here. And here's the high pressure system. So let's assume Umberto's not here. You would have a steering flow that would guide this system right toward the Carolina coast. All right? But we can't say that. We do have an Umberto here. So the question is, is does Umberto disrupt the steering flow? Instead of going like this, does it cause it to slow down? I could see where it slows down and then goes out to sea. I could also see how this imparts wind shear. The UK Met shows this, remember? Weakens it, and then it kind of goes out and away from the North Carolina coast. Now, none of the global models say, except for the UK Met, say that that's going to happen. But I do want to let you know that is a possibility. If it wasn't for Umberto, I would say it's coming in. But we can't say that right now. I think it's more likely than not that it will take that track toward the Carolina coast and make landfall somewhere along the Carolina coast. Now, normally, if you know, and, and even if Umberto does impart some influence on this, I still could see it going to the Carolina coast. Now, history tells us storms going to the Carolina coast make landfall where? Anywhere from Charleston to the Outer Banks, maybe uh, uh, toward Cape Hatteras, that this would be the area. But with Umberto here, that could really screw up the flow, and I guess I could see it coming a little farther south as well. So right now, if it makes landfall, I would tell you it's this would be the area from about Cape Hatteras all the way down to the Georgia-South Carolina coast, state line. But I will tell you, history says that it's usually up the coast, which is here to here. There's one more concern I want to talk about. And we haven't issued a track on this yet because we're not exactly, until we get a good low-level center, we think we have it, but I, I, we have to figure this out, what the impact on Umberto is. But I do want to show you one concern I do have. If it makes this landfall and comes in at the angle that some of the models are showing, this, this could be very very problematic for the coastal, for the mountains and the coast of the Carolinas. I, I want to show you this. I am not here to hype it. I'm just telling you the concerns. Right now, we think it's more likely that it does make a landfall as a tropical or storm or hurricane along the Carolina coast Monday evening. However, because of Umberto, there is a wide range of possibilities that could include this slowing down and pulling away from the Carolina coast, and there won't be any, there won't be as severe impacts. But one thing I am worried about, just looking at some of the modeling here, and I'll show it to you moving, uh, moving forward here. Let's go for it. See, I want to show you the, the European model. The way in which it comes in, if the European is right like this, and it has a little farther south, you see how it's coming in at an angle like this, an angle coming in like this. If that happens, that is a very bad scenario for coastal South Carolina and North Carolina, because here's what would happen is you'd have an inflow channel here. Now, maybe it would be interrupted by Humberto, but you would have an inflow channel coming in here that could spread very heavy rain in this zone, which could include Wilmington, New Bern, it could include Myrtle Beach, and it could go right up against the North Carolina mountains, where you can easily get 6 to 12 inches of rain here, because what would happen is, because the storm comes in at that angle, that rain band, you see how it just kind of sits in this area in here. That would be very bad, very bad, for southeastern, uh, coastal North Carolina, southern North Carolina, and into the mountains, and perhaps even into the up, upstate of South Carolina. If it would come in at that angle, that would be a problem. And even the new GFS, here's the GFS, it comes in at that angle too. 
that would be a huge problem for rain. And obviously, there'd be a pretty strong storm surge depending on the uh, on the uh, strength of the storm. So th- this could be a very concerning storm if it comes in at that angle. If it wasn't for Umberto off to the east, I'd be sounding the alarm a little more. But I'm hesitant because I haven't seen a setup like this in the Atlantic where you have this setup. You've got two storms in close proximity to each other. And this is Monday. There's the European. Here it is. It's separated by less than 700 miles. So, I, I, you know, how, how is this going to impact it? I'm not sure. I haven't seen a setup like this. So I'm hesitant right now to make a definitive call. But I think what we have to let you know is that this is likely, even though history suggests that these storms like to go into the east coast of Florida, the pattern tells me it's probably east of the east coast of Florida on Sunday, and you have to worry about the Carolinas. And if this system slows down, which it could, because you have another problem here early next week, when you look at the surface map, you see an area of high pressure. You see this? You've got an area of high pressure in here helping to accentuate the northeasterly flow. This would block it. It would slow down. And that's another problem for heavy rain. So that that's why I wanted to do this video today to sound the alarm. You have to get ready for this in the Carolinas, South Carolina, North Carolina, e- even in the Georgia. But I, I, I think it's more likely South Carolina, North Carolina coast. All right. And you have to start to get ready for a landfalling storm here Monday night. I could see it moving out to sea because of Umberto and, and maybe weakening because Umberto becomes so strong it puts shear in. I don't know how this is going to work at the current time. But where I look at, the Carolina coast has to get ready for a landfalling storm. We're going to keep you updated here on AccuWeather.com. Uh, Ac- the AccuWeather Network. I'll t- be talking about this on uh, AccuWeather early all day tomorrow. Really difficult forecast moving forward here. And I want to leave you with this. All right. I'm going to leave you with this. We'll leave you with this that we're probably going to have a tropical storm or hurricane right in here Sunday. And if If we get a landfall, I think it's in here Monday night, but we could get to steer it out. So stay tuned. It's a tricky forecast.